Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be here. My name's Bertie. I'm from England. Um, may we start with Beethoven, please, from the second half of the Beethoven.
Thank you very much, everyone. It's only the last two bars that are fortissimo. I think the rest of that last section from 350, just a little softer, but I think what's really important is that the 16ths are just as late as possible. They get a bit relaxed and then we slow down. So actually just very, very late on all of the 16ths would be great. 350. <laughs> dare to be even later in the brass and the timpani on the 16th. They're almost so late that they're at the end of the next bar. I know that you want to put energy into the 16th, but I think it has just to be later than we are doing at the moment. It feels a bit like it's kind of a late eighth and it needs to be brum so short, you know, the shortest you've played all day. 350. <laughs> yeah. That's so much better, thank you. I think this movement is really, it's all about um, joy and happiness. And I think, you know, partly because maybe we were a little bit slow, it just feels like a little bit too serious. So let's go from, say, uh, bar 212. This is a very comic bit anyway, this. And I think we can just bring out more of that. So for the horns in 214, more push here, please. Um, so a bigger crescendo. And then all of this, the diminuendo is just as important as the crescendo here, okay? 212. And, and on this sound here, maybe no vibrato at all until a crescendo, and then add it in, completely dazed. Let's do it one more time. I think a bit more second violin in the bar before F. Um, your diminuendo is later than the cellos and basses, I think. So just a bit stronger there, and a little bit more flute, if we may, before F. Thank you. theme here, I think the character of it needs to be a little bit more excited, I think. Maybe let's break just before the 16th a bit more, and then we won't slow down either. Just keep it. It's got to be sort of wide-eyed, very exciting. F. just go to, like to go one more time from G, if we may. And I think let's play this a little bit more as if it's, you know, uh, it's, it's a kind of children's story or, or a cartoon or something like that. So a bit more vivid, even a little bit shorter and softer. Ba, 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 ba. And then when we get to the fortissimo, open and grand and very powerful, but kind of, you know, it, it's not heavy ever. It just has to be that open, glorious, golden sound. From G, please.
H itself, now this is a major chord in the exposition, but here it's a minor, so it's really a catastrophe at this point. You know, 270, 271, it's quite casual, we're very comfortable here, and then all of a sudden, there's this moment of disaster. So particularly for the cellos and the basses and the violas who have this B flat, more please, and it needs to be more pesante on this chord. Let's do um, bar 268. And the string chord at H, can we hear the spread more and it be still a little bit shorter? So you can start the spread early if you like to. Just the strings on H. And just as much on the second one. Just the second one, second bar of H. Can we make a, a more, more of a spread before the beat? I am. And then let's do Tutti please at H. Tutti at H. Bravo to Mendelssohn, please, from the beginning.
This second subject here, I think it always has the feel in two. You know, it just sings in longer phrases than the rest of the piece. Can we just go from one, two, three? And lead us all the way through these bars, Charlie. Leading all the way to that top A there. The eighths aren't that important, but the top A just sings. And unfortunately, we have to stop it there. So let's go back to the very beginning of this piece, please. Now, Mendelssohn, he wrote the piece, and then he rewrote the piece. And in this rewrite version, it's much more kind of romantic and, and uh, sort of like a story than the first time. He took out all sorts of counterpoint, and he made it less academic. So I think we need to play it in a much more sort of spontaneous, improvisatory way. And so at the very start, let's it's like almost like an organ kind of building up these waves of harmony here. No vibrato, please, until we get to the crescendo in, in bar seven, and then just warm that sound. And the clarinets and the oboes, if you just merge into the string sound, so it's a beautiful misty sky. sound is beautiful now in the violins and thank you for the wind as well in the melody i think it's it shouldn't be phrased every bar so it's just comes away all the time and don't let the 16th be too important very mysterious That's really beautiful, and I think it sounds so different now, doesn't it, to the Beethoven, which is exactly how it should sound. In bar 15, and also bar 19, these sforzandos, they come out of nowhere, and he's very clear, he writes F and then sforzando, so it must be very strong, like a kind of, you know, a burst of light, something bursting through there, and in, in the rhythm, in 19, very dramatic, I think, and very precise on this 16th note here, please. Can we do 15? But also notice that basically everyone has a different marking. You know, sometimes accents, sometimes sports sandos. And if we hear a bit more of the trill in the flute, that'll be lovely, a bit faster on the trill, so it's more mysterious again. So in 34, 
if the, um, the oboe and the bassoon can sustain that last note really legato over the bar line, so that in 35, the violins connect exactly to that sound, um, absolutely seamless. And the violas for the triplets, don't rush the triplets, keep them quite legato and quite uh, turbulent, so not too, not too rushed or casual. Uh, last thing, bar 31, please. Thank you very much, everyone. My time is done. Thank you so much. See you later.